Good evening. Uh, my name is Isha, your host for today's session. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, the agenda of today's webinar is uh, to share insights with you on e-masters in quantitative finance and risk management. This is by the Department of Industrial and Management Engineering at IIT Kanpur and also to understand the relevance of this program in today's day and age. Um, thank you for taking the time off. I know we understand it's a working day and uh, you ha have had a lot of queries as well. Uh, I think our counselors have been reaching out to all of you and trying to address, but we thought this will be a great opportunity to have a face-to-face -face interaction prior to joining of the program. And um, of course, prior to applying for the program or even if you've applied prior to you attending the selection process also, so thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Thank you for professors for joining in. Uh, before we start, I'd really like to take this opportunity to introduce our speakers today. We have with us today Professor Vasim and Professor Suman. Uh, just a quick introduction because I think you will be meeting them every day, at least during the class as during the weekends. So starting with Professor Vasim Ahmad. Professor Ahmad is Associate Professor in the Department of Economic Sciences and a visiting fellow at London School of Economics and Political Science. He is also a recipient of P.K. Kilkar Young Research Fellowship of IIT Kanpur, Subir Chaudhary Postdoctoral Fellowship at LSE. He was also awarded the Excellence in Tech Award, te uh, sorry, am I, I'll repeat that, Excellence in Teaching Award in 2022. RBI Scholarship 2018 and Young Economist by the Indian Econometric Society. His research areas are finance, macroeconomics, and applied econometrics. His research papers have appeared in leading journals such as Economics Letters, uh, Energy Economics, Emerging Market Reviews, International Reviews of Financial Analysis, and Finance Research Letters. Thank you so much, Professor Vasim, for joining us. Um, we have with us Professor Suman today. Professor Suman Saurabh is an assistant professor, Department of Industrial and Management Engineering at IIT Kanpur. He holds a PhD. From... Sorry. Okay. He holds a PhD from IIM Ahmedabad, a Master's of Business Economics from the University of Delhi, a BTech from IIT BHU. His research interests are in the areas of corporate finance, behavioral finance, and asset pricing. His research work has been published in journals of repute such as Journal of Economics and Finance and in Managerial Finance. These have been presented at national and international conferences. Professor Suman has also written a case study in finance, which is published by All India Management Association. In addition to all of his above achievements, uh, he received the Outstanding Teacher Recognition from the Academic Senate of IIT Kanpur. Thank you, Professor Suman, for joining us today. And I'm sure everybody is very keen on hearing from both of you, and I'm sure they don't want to hear any more of me. Uh, so over to you. Uh, please, if you could help us uh, know more about the program. Sure. Uh, just a small update. Um, for all the participants, if you could please put in all your questions um, in the chat. Uh, because a lot of these questions are actually going to be answered in the first few slides itself. So it will just be very repetitive. Give us some time. Towards the end of it, all your questions will be addressed. Thank you. All right. So am I audible clearly? Yes. Sir. Okay. Good evening, everyone. And thank you for joining for this information webinar here. So we'll be talking about the e-masters program in quantitative finance and risk management, in short QFRM, which is offered by Department of Industrial and Management Engineering and Economic Sciences at IIT Kanpur. So this program, the sole objective of this is to make uh, professionals aware of some of the tools and techniques which are there in the finance domain. So it offers a very unique opportunity because it is administered primarily and in an online mode. The lectures will be held over the weekends and uh, it will touch upon the very advanced techniques which are used in the finance industry. So it offers a unique opportunity to those who wish to learn the tools and techniques which are used in quantitative finance and the risk management roles in the industry. The lectures will be taken by academic experts as well as experts from the industry, people from IITs and several similar place business schools, as well as people who are at the top of uh, their roles in the industry, in the primarily in the finance and banking sector. 
We'll be talking, uh, taking you through the state of the art techniques in finance, be it data analytics, data intelligence, blockchain, quantitative modeling, machine learning. These will be some of the state of the art techniques which will be covered through some courses within the program. And the course pedagogy will involve a blended mode of live discussions, case-based uh, learning as well as project-based learning. So you'll get to work on real data set, uh, try implement some of the strategies that you are learning in, as part of the course, learn the implementation of blockchain in finance as an area. And similarly, machine learning applications, how those are coming up very strongly in the finance and the, uh, and the banking industry. So this is what QFIRM ideally offers. It's a unique opportunity to pick the tools and techniques which are relevant in quantitative finance as a domain. Now, the program, the key objective is to enable the uh, professionals who are aspiring to enter in the finance segment or who are wanting to upskill themselves in some of the state of the art thing. They may be working in the traditional methods which are used in banking sector, but there are a lot of upcoming things in blockchain and machine learning which have got use cases in finance. Uh, the bulk of the takeaway from this course will be uh, the salient areas which are highlighted in machine learning and blockchain applications. I, I will take you through the exact set of modules where you will get exposure to those topics uh, uh, in a short while from now. And the uh, program also offers you to work on some projects. As part of the projects, you can work on some ideas where you have some something in mind where you would like to try your hands at developing a financial product. So uh, any kind of innovative thought that you bring to the classroom, you want to take the help of the mentors from academia as well as industry, you will get an opportunity to shape those ideas. You'll be able to access and tap into the larger innovation ecosystem at IIT Kanpur, the innovation center and the incubation center that we have, which has a very thriving uh, kind of startup culture. So there are opportunities to work on your ideas, get the right kind of mentorship, and potentially, if you wish to start your own business in the finance sector, there may be opportunities to also explore that area. It provides sustained training opportunities to the budding traders. People who are working in the finance segment may also gain from this kind of a program because you will gain deep expertise into different tools which, which are used in the risk management practices. If you are working on the investment side and you want to get upscaled in the risk side of it, you may have exposure on those lines as well. Now, some of the things uh, uh, which we boast of in terms of uh, this being a very curated kind of a program, you will see in a short while how uh, topics from computer science, topics from uh, uh, finance, economics are being put to use in terms of a very uh, curated experience in learning the quantitative finance as a domain. It offers an interactive opportunity to learn from top leaders in finance. It provides, we have tried to ensure that there is a mix of both theory so that you get the right kind of rigor that is needed to work in the finance sector. Also know about the pitfalls which you may come across and which you need to avoid. So every aspect of quantitative modeling that should be considered while you are trying to propose a new product in the financial domain is where our focus will be. And that that, that is some of the USP that this program currently has. There will be specialized modules on uh, uh, which will have some tutorial sessions on R and Python as in, and when it gets used in the data analytics applications in finance, machine learning and blockchain in finance. There's also uh, some kind of uh, uh, facilitation for those who may be looking for a placement opportunity. Uh, the Institute also extends some level of support. Some opportunities will be shared with those who are wishing, uh, who are willing to kind of make a transition to the finance domain. So we will only be uh, able to facilitate, but meaningful opportunities may be shared with the aspiring candidates from the program. And uh, you will be earning a Senate approved IIT Kanpur Senate approved degree. Uh, it's a, a degree which will be awarded at the convocation when, when it is held every year. So it's a, not a certificate program. It's a degree program that IIT Kanpur has uh, started offering. And it is already third year in the running. So there are a lot of programs. Some people have already graduated from this uh, program in the recent past. Now, the flexibility is the very unique thing in terms of uh, the kind of learning that you will get. Uh, it will have a mix of both live as well as recording, recorded sessions, which you can watch at your own uh, leisure whenever you and are able to manage uh, time over a weekend or over on the weekdays as well. However, the live sessions will primarily be held on the 
weekends. So Saturdays and Sundays, you can expect uh, uh, in, a, in a typical quarter, we have three courses and in each course, uh, we'll have 75 minutes of lecture on Saturday and similarly on Sunday. That's how it is uh, structured. You also, because you will be an alumnus after earning this degree from IIT Kanpur, you get an access to the vast network of IIT Kanpur alumni. And there's a campus immersion module also towards the end of the quarter. So there are four quarters uh, in this program. In the third or fourth quarter, there will be a, a campus immersion module ranging from one week to two weeks where you will come to visit the IIT Kanpur campus and interact with all the different departments, faculty members who have been teaching in the program and also access our innovation and incubation ecosystem out there. There will be immense peer learning opportunity. What we have learned in our previous set of cohorts is that our cohort have been very diverse in terms of their academic background, in terms of their professional background. Some uh, have been vice president in certain organizations to some which are currently having lesser experience three to five years. So there is a very uh, rich experience in terms of peer learning opportunities that one gets out of this program. Now the program structure, uh, as I was mentioning, and this particular slide puts it in very clear uh, terms that an academic year is split into four quarters. Each quarter is of eight weeks, eight to 10 weeks. And after the eight weeks window of lectures, there may be a gap of a week and then you will be required to write the exams. Now the exams also for the benefit of our online participants, exams are also remotely proctored and can be attempted in online mode. So that's the flexibility. Flexibility is at every end in terms of when you wish to enroll for a particular course, how many courses do you want to enroll for? I will take you through those uh, flexibility in terms of enrollment per quarter as well. So there'll be uh, 10 core uh, uh, subjects and there'll be two projects that may be there. And we, we are also planning to make it uh, flexible so that uh, people can opt for 11 courses and maybe one project. So uh, bulk of it will become clear as you uh, express interest in applying for the program and interact with the faculty members when, uh, so the gen general selection process is that you will be applying to the program. Uh, you'll be shortlisted based on your profile and uh, you'll have you'll be required to appear for an interaction come interview kind of a, a zoom meeting where it is primarily an interaction we want to know your motivation why do you want to do this program how do you think uh, it will be helpful in your career right now and what kind of prior academic experience makes you well suited for doing this particular program that is what the interaction session will essentially entail so the program is split into four quarters. As I mentioned, each quarter is of eight to 10 weeks uh, and followed by exams, which is again done in a remote mode. So in the quarter one, the focus is more on picking the basics from economics and finance and uh, picking up the core instrument, which are typically used in the risk management uh, domains, which is derivatives. So in the first quarter, you will be provided with exposure in economics and finance. You will get exposure to the relevant set of instruments which are there. How does the macro economy work? How, what is the function of RBI? And several similar ideas will be introduced in the first module here. A uh, very extensive course on quantitative methods which are very widely used in any kind of quantitative modeling will be covered in the second module which is quantitative methods in R and Python. Derivatives will start introducing you to some of the derivative instruments, which are very widely used in the risk management domain. Then we, uh, the second quarter is where we start building the base from what we have learned in the first quarter and start seeing the application. So we'll see uh, very extensively how portfolios are constructed, the security analysis and portfolio management will, course will entail those uh, aspects of how equity portfolios are managed, how fixed income portfolios are managed. We'll be looking at the risk part of uh, what kind of risk you are exposed to if you are ex uh, investing in the equity segment or in the fixed income segment. The second module will start building into the state of the art uh, topics that I was mentioning in the early part, machine learning techniques as those are applicable in finance. So the uniqueness of this particular module is that it, 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 it makes a very audacious attempt to introduce the machine learning in one course and also to take it to application areas. As you will see, if you happen to join the course, you will realize that some of the application domains are very state of the art currently in practice. 
some of the use cases that we'll do will be directly applicable in some of the trading desk wherever machine learning approaches have been put to use. We'll see uh, the how the treasury functions in an organization, be it manufacturing or the banking sector, how does the treasury uh, department ideally work and how do they look after the risk management requirements of a particular organization. And subsequently in quarter three, uh, another state of the art thing that we'll try to introduce, it will be in the blockchain, which is an emerging technology already in practice for the last six, seven years. We'll try to see some of the existing use cases and what potentially can also be implemented on a blockchain technology. There will be a very detailed uh, uh, kind of a, a coverage on derivatives, how it gets applied in very, very many domains of risk management, be it uh, whether derivatives, be it uh, power sector related derivative instruments, some of those ideas will be covered in this quarter three course on advanced derivatives. And uh, in the quarter four, in quarter three, as you can see, we start providing the participants with some kind of a hands-on learning experience where they uh, identify a problem statement, work on that idea for eight weeks with some uh, supervision and mentorship from either the faculty or from industry leaders. And uh, the goal is uh, that through project one and project two, if you are able to identify a meaningful idea and try to uh, kind of see whether it is actually working the prototype, the minimum uh, viable product kind of a thing, whether it is feasible, sustainable, and can it be actually put to practice? So those are the goals that we have set ourselves for in the project one and two. So this is how the program is structured. A program, uh, one year is what we typically hope that most participants will be doing the courses as per the scheme. But as I was remarking earlier, there is a flexibility. So therefore, uh, if you, uh, if you are finding your current uh, work commitments very hectic and you wish to only enroll for one module or two modules, those choices are also available. And then next, when this whole this quarter repeats a year later, you may still be able to do that in quarter fifth quarter, typically in a fifth quarter, which is like one year added to that. So you, if you happen to miss this and you wish to do this later, you may have a choice by adding four more quarters, essentially one year later. So there's a flexibility that if you wish to do it at a very fast pace, one year is the shortest window. And if you wish to exercise flexibility because your work commitments demand, so you may also do it over an extended window. And the Institute allows the completion of the program in a maximum of three years. That is what uh, the duration is. But fastest track would be to finish it in one year. The program will be uh, delivered by some of the academic experts from in, uh, IIT Kanpur as well as similarly placed uh, global, uh, re uh, globally recognized institutions. And as well as people from the industry will be taking certain sessions in some of the courses may be widely handled by industry practitioners who will bring in the aspects which are in practice right now. And those exposure is what you, we typically get. So this is what we uh, wanted to convey. Uh, we'll be taking questions as an, I hope some of the questions that you had in mind would have been answered by this particular short 10 minutes of discussion. And some of those, some of those which may not be yet be answered, uh, uh, Isha will be potentially handling those and we'll be answering, we'll be very glad to answer some of the other queries that you currently have. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. I think this was quite a detailed uh, explanation of the complete program starting from one to three years, uh, right? We'll just move on to the FAQ section. We have a lot of questions coming in. Uh, one of the earlier questions that we got was, um, can a fresher take up this program? This question has come in from Syed uh, Fezil. So he wants to know if the course is available for freshers. Uh, no, I, I think we have the requirement of two years actually to experience. But yes, if you have relevant experience, then one or two months can be given a waiver. But we require the experience at least two years. Right. Uh, moving on to our next question from Arvind Do we get hands on learning on big data during the program tenure? Yes, especially in the modules on ML in finance, ML application in finance, we have hands on and also in quant measures are in Python, which is in the first quarter. There also you will have the opportunity to deal with a lot of types of data sets like panel data, time series, cross section. So not just big data, but also on. And we uh, will also have the opportunity to work on very extensive high dimensional models. So 
that could be both supervised and unsupervised kind of planning. Yes. Thank you. Uh, next question is from Aditya. He's asking, are you going to cover corporate finance or investment finance as well as a part of uh, quantitative finance? Yes. So, yeah. So in the course on treasury and credit risk management, we'll be covering the aspects of financial statement analysis, dwelling into some of the ideas from corporate finance as well, and then take it to risk management practices. So yes, it, it does get covered in the program modules. Yeah. Thank you. So um, this is from Gore. I am doing CM CIMA chartered from the Chartered Institute of Management. Can I do this course? Will it add advantage? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, it will be an advantage, and you are also eligible for this if you are chartered upon. I, I think um, this is one of the other most commonly asked question. Is a CA professional eligible to apply? Yes, yes, yes. You are you, you have certainly counted as bachelor's degree or even master's. But the, the percentage criteria or CPA criteria is the same. Okay. How do, this is from Satish. How does a MS student get benefit from this? Yes, especially for MS, if you are looking for MS in finance, then this course, this program offers a lot of opportunity to learn, not just finance, but also the quant side of it. And, and towards the end, we also have dedicated modules on risk management. So it helps you understand in a big way. And also, especially the components of project one and project two, it adds value to your knowledge because you have the freedom to explore your area of interest. And and maybe if you're interested, if you have the opportunity, then you can work on your life for it also if you're interested. And we also have the option to get into the fast home kind of model, model. But we we appreciate if if you go by your own model, exercise and try to apply whatever you have done. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from Antrix. If someone has already completed FRM. Is taking this program advisable? What value addition can be expected? Okay, yeah. So in, in case of FRM, uh, the clear focus is on uh, the risk management aspect, but uh, some of the newer things that the participant who has an FRM certification or charter holder, they may gain the exposure to the machine learning applications, which are typically not part of the curriculum in FRM. Similarly, blockchain applications, some of the ideas on the advanced derivatives uh, yeah. may not fall within the scope of the FRM, which is partly introductory in terms of the derivative instruments and applications in the risk management domain. And to add to that, uh, someone who has an FRM uh, charter, uh, this is a degree. So it's more like you, you own you currently have a UG degree and you can actually have a master's degree uh, from IIT Kanpur. So that's a, another advantage to look at very holistically, broadly in the overall domain of quantitative finance and risk management. So definitely that QF part is something that an FRM charter holder will also gain from. Yeah. And, and and also uh, we, we have the advanced financial modeling also there with the extensive idea about, I don't know, the whether uh, FRM has that kind of opportunity or not, but here you get the opportunity. Uh, Ashutosh has a question Is there a course on advanced statistics? Yes, 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 yes. We start with the first quarter itself. So we have a quantum metrics in R and Python. We have ML in finance. We have blockchain also to some extent it applies. We also have the advanced financial model. So there we have almost four modules dedicated for some kind of different learning, not just quantity statistics, but some kind of different exposure. In technical analysis, also to some extent, the basic uh, statistics will have to be but they mostly on charting and other stuff. But yes, we have dedicated models in this. Uh, Adarsh has a next question, sir. What is the topic of our entrance test? So they're already preparing for it. Yes, so we normally go by the, so it depends upon the number of candidates. If you know, if, if we have a sufficiently large number of candidates, like 1,000 or so, then we plan for an entrance test. Otherwise, it will be mostly based on your interview session. So interview is going to be uh, somewhat, I would say, based on your exposure. 
in some kind of prior knowledge, so whether you have the uh, mathematics background or you know at least about the differentiations of 12th level statistics, 12th level mathematics. And even if you don't have 12th level mathematics, at least 10th standard mathematics is, standard, is expected. And going ahead, we train you to pick up all the advanced tools. Um, yeah, next one is from Tutika. So I have one year, 10 months of experience. Can I join? So what is the background? Where, where she is work? Yes, uh, so, the prior experience. Yeah. yeah. And uh, since it is very close to two, two years, which is the threshold uh, kind of eligibility, it may be considered. So you should write to us and inquire about your eligibility, whether you may be considered for the program. That, uh, so, Tutika, please, can you uh, just put in the remaining details also? We'll have that at least. Um, just one. Uh, Naveen has a question on uh, how much C++ development is involved in quantitative modeling. C++, we, we, uh, we, we give the exposure on R and Python mostly, and also to some extent, if you are comfortable, we are open to platforms. But such, of course, we see plus plus is the main, I would say, thing to understand any R Python because of the platform we use. That's a language we often use, but it is mostly on open source there. Thank you, sir. Vidushi has a question. I have eight years of experience and a grad and a graduate currently working in credit risk team and implementing capital models. How this course will be benefited to me, or should I go for business analytics course? Yeah, so I think Vidushi, if you are looking at uh, making the career transition to other domains, then yes, business analytics course may be helpful. But if you wish to build the expertise in the uh, financial markets domain, while uh, uh, you currently have uh, eight years of experience in credit risk team, so you will get uh, larger exposure to things beyond the credit risk part and uh, that may provide you with some kind of currency in terms of making a upward move in the finance sector. So uh, while we may not be able to comment on whether you should go for business analytics or not, but if your goal is to be working in the finance domain, uh, it is certainly the right kind of a program that may be uh, suiting to your goals. So you may wish to consider applying for the QFRM degree. Yeah. And and uh, and I, I just want to add, so we also have the dedicated modules, which is called TCRM. So if you are into the credit domain, so we have made this management, we'll also give you a different exposure. And it has all the details that you will have. But as uh, as uh, for your background, it looks like you should go for the finance of this range. Thank you, sir. Uh, Anurag Chauhan has a question on computer background is required for the program, high level computer background. Some basic background is required, not much, but yes, we expect that at least you should know that how to and at least do the basic analysis. So if, if, you have, if you are aware about the interface 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, you should know how to get that. Otherwise, you will be trained, you will be given this project. Thank you. Our next question is from Amandeep. Uh, what kind of roles would one be eligible for in the industry after completing the course? Good question. So I appreciate that. So here you have the role like if you want to go into a banking domain, so it also opens the opportunity, especially if you are into trade and trade risk. If you are getting into finance, completely investment, so then you have the Position private economic analysis, investment analyst, you are you can also get into the TPP domain where you are handling the portfolio and balancing and, and rebalancing of the portfolio. If you are into the wealth management, it also offers opportunity to understand and do. If you want to get into the bond modeling role, it also gives you opportunity because then you have the full capacity and understanding about different types of models which are required, all different types of data. So it gives you a complete exposure. So you'll have plenty of options after this. Uh, uh, Professor Suman, would you want to add anything to this? Uh, we can move to the next question as well. We can move to the next. That was partly mm -hmm. I intended to. Yeah. Right. Uh, we have a lot of questions on placement um, 
uh, for the program. I think this was covered by Professor Suman during the presentation. Uh, so would you want to add anything or we just go ahead with the same? Yeah, so basically, as I was mentioning, uh, uh, some kind of opportunities which are aligned to, so we typically do some kind of survey of uh, what interest areas are you are looking into, which kind of roles are you basically looking to make a transition to. Having known that and having done a, a mapping of what is your current experience and whether those roles will be actually available to a participant with three years, five years, 10 years experience, that role mapping and then some level of facilitation is definitely done by uh, our student placement office. However, as uh, the uh, very eligibility is, it is for the working professionals. So we are allowing you with some kind of an upskilling opportunities, which will definitely have some currency in the job market. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, making a placement offer available to you, uh, definitely not. Uh, none of the even full-time degree programs of IIT Kanpur commit a placement guarantee. It is more of a facilitation that IIT Kanpur will try to do for uh, the participants who are uh, graduating from this particular program. Yeah. And, 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 and here one more uh, opportunity that I want to add that in IIT Kanpur ecosystem, we have a student-driven placement activity. So you will be part of so we will, we need the representative from your side. So you'll be given full freedom to be part of the community, look, uh, to look after, to identify the companies, to contact them also so that our team will be there at the back end. So they will be helping you with different types of details. But you will be uh, directly involved. Your placement in the city is going to be an activity. So you'll be involved, you'll be given proper support and, and whatever the, the resources you need will be provided, but we don't assure even in our regular programs. Basement. So it will be based on your past exposure and also the performance in the program. So if you have done well, you have a good CPI. So I think there will not be an issue in this. But if you if, if you have not done if you have not done well in the course and then you are extending your quarters in either with one module or two modules, then it takes time. So there will be a challenge. So I request that if you're running the program, switch on time, have a good CPI, and whatever background you have, you will have a lot of opportunity to explore and get the job. Thank you, Professor Vasim, for the detailed uh, explanation. Uh, before we move on to our next question, I really want to take this opportunity to introduce uh, Professor B.V. Fani. I think this program, continuing this without introducing him wouldn't really be fair. Um, he heads the Department of Industrial and Management Engineering at IIT Kanpur, and he has a long list of accolades. Um, I will just, you know, in brief, just get to the point. Um, something that a lot of entrepreneurs would be interested in. So he is engaged during during his entire tenure. Um, his engagement with his professional tenure includes, but not limited to, 16 years of teaching in finance, innovation, and entrepreneurship across various top management schools in India and abroad. Uh, he is an avid researcher. He has 31 research and policy publications in the last 10 years and presentation, presentation in 35 plus conferences. So I'm sure these numbers have increased. Uh, and as the head of IP management, he has facilitated of filing 400 plus patents. And the good news here is also, and he's been instrumental in commercializing 25% of these. Uh, Professor Pani has been invited and served as a member of more than 20 policy and evaluation committees of the government of India uh, in innovation ecosystem space. He is an active mentor in startup space and has served on over 15 startup as of the board of member. Thank you, Professor. Uh, if I've missed out anything, I'm sorry. Uh, if you would like to add anything, please do. Uh, we are we finished a briefing on the Q and A, and we were just walking through the Q and A section over there. Um, if you want to add anything before we proceed, we'll be happy to hear from you. So the first thing is that don't believe anything she says, everything she says, okay? So <laughs> normal guys trying to do, you know, something which will help the domain. So this was essentially a dream for us because we were looking at the gap between the uh, finance taught in most of the MBA schools and 
the actual requirement in the industry for the basic uh, analytical and quantitative component of the finance. So there were many organizations which also used to give them, give a kind of a certificate like you have, you have the uh, risk management uh, FRM certification and you have a CFA certification which also gives some kind of a thing, but there is no structured uh, program which introduces the students to analyze the financial market from a purely quantitative point of view other than the economic and the casual point of view. So this is what something which, which we have seen that there is a big gap and none of the existing programs in the country actually address this. Even abroad, we may have something like a MS in quantitative finance or uh, uh, MTech in quantitative finance or something similar. But in India, we have not seen these kinds of programs. Earlier, we, we essentially used to run them as a workshop mode with uh, IDRBTC and with RPI Institute as a uh, winter or summer workshops where we used to introduce, including with IGIDR, introduce students to the quantitative aspect of the financial markets. Without the quantitative skill set, uh, anybody who wants to do financial markets or engage in financial markets or create themselves a separate career path in financial markets, it is, it is very difficult because after a certain level, after what you are taught in MBA programs or in other programs, uh, management programs, the next level, if you have to go in finance, you have to be, in a sense, uh, uh, mathematically enabled to some extent or quantitatively, quantitatively enabled because everything is abstracted. At that point, you are essentially looking at things not in the form of, in the form of math most of the time, not, not that kind of in-depth math, but kind of math which abstracts most of the information so that you can actually process a lot of information in spite of the various tools and the computational facilities. And how do you read the numbers and how do you analyze the numbers and how do you get what you want from the number? So when you make a decision, this quantitative component, understanding of the quantitative component is very uh, critical. And most of the actually are enabled or uh, have come through uh, from your basic mathematical foundation in your 10th and 12th. So what we build upon is that kind of a mathematics which you are working, even your geometric progressions, your standard, you know, arithmetic progression, yeah. then you have some kind of algebra which you are looking at quadratic equation, then you are looking at some kind of calculus kind where you are looking at derivative. So most of these are, you already know, we are trying to, even the probabilities and the stats you have studied in your 10, 10 plus 2 kind of a thing. We are trying to, in this program, we would like to build on that with a specific focus on uh, financial markets. And that specific focus with integrating the latest technologies of blockchain, artificial intelligence, machine learning kind of a thing so that we are bridging this gap between this. And that creates a new breed of financial uh, experts who actually understand both the qualitative and the quantitative part. So our effort is in this direction. Given the technology and the quantitative strength of, of IIT Kanpur in this domain, given that we have these centers in artificial intelligence, we have these centers in blockchain, we have these centers in cybersecurity, we have all this, we have a great mathematical uh, quantitative finance uh, team to base that and also looking at this, we want to leverage this to provide something which will be very helpful for people in the industry. So I think this is the overall uh, this thing, mostly what Professor Vasim and Professor Saurav may have already indicated this. i sorry, I missed out. I was stuck in some other meeting and then I came out late. And I hope this gives a clarity in terms of what you can expect from this program. And placement is what Professor Suman had said is true. IIT Kanpur does not officially do placement, but what it does, it, it facilitates placement. 
but most of the placement is done by the students themselves who create their own groups and do it. But in the case of e-masters, we are trying to see if we can engage a professional placement agency to help you guys out. But that is still a little bit away. So okay. let us see if we can do it by the time of this batch. And hopefully we are putting that in place so that they'll help all the e-master students, not just um, quantitative finance students. But my thought process is that if you're graduating from an IIT, most of the doors are normally open. So it's not very difficult to, unless you are really not very good, it's not very difficult to snag a job which is in line with what your career aspirations are. So this is what we are trying to do. And of course, we are now trying to see if we can also encourage some of the e master students to come and join us for the full-time PhD programs. So that's in a that's an added incentive for people to join our uh, e-masters program. And I think this is the only degree uh, which is given, uh, convocated degree, which is provided in any institution in the country uh, in the e-mode. So this is the only place where we are uh, doing it. That's why we are pioneers with this. Yeah. Thank you, Isha. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, just moving on to some of the questions, I think so once you started giving explanations, the number of questions started to reduce. I think we've addressed a lot of questions. So we'll just see what's left of the earlier ones. Uh, Victor has a question. How is the course helpful in stock trading business for H&I? Stock trading business for high net worth individuals. What he's trying to say, right? We, we make H and I high net worth individuals, right? Stock trading in high net worth individuals. So the math component is where it helps. Algorithmic trading is where it helps. You have so many tools and techniques available which can be used. If you are creating your own portfolio and your own this thing, you can engage in a lot of these uh, uh, available uh, software which will allow you to take a decision. But what is more critical is not, is not about those tools are available for everybody and anybody. You can put the data and they turn out some kind of a result which based on which you can invest. But understanding the underlying algorithmic uh, foundation on how these things work, that comes from this uh, course. So you would actually understand when they are turning out these numbers in a black box kind of a mode what actually goes inside the system. And so that you can really make a very informative, informative decision in terms of whether to actually trust or not trust, whether it should go or not go with the kind of recommendation which is coming out. Yeah, I hope that answers it. Yeah. Uh, next, on similar lines, we have a question from Prakash. He is asking, I am a share market trader and engineer by profession. Can I join this course? And this course will help me in trading. Yes, yes, it will help you in trading, especially if you are looking for intraday kind of setup. So there also it helps. So we have some modules under that we discuss those things. But it is also about variety of products available. So under advanced derivatives, we come talking about different types of products and how you can take the healthy positions and how you can do that for different types. So I think so we not just go for generic uh, derivatives. But we also go, go for non generic ones. So, there uh, you will have a lot of understanding about how to diversify and how to go for anything. So, if you are traders, so traders should not just go for uh, starting points in the morning and settling in the evening. It, it goes beyond. So, if you want to explore beyond that domain, it is good that you should opt for this for your program. Uh, next question is uh, how. Does this program benefit a banking professional? We, in in the first cohort and in the second cohort also we have already some people with that background, so it helps you uh, understand. As I mentioned, the different types of products, also the strategies, which is and then the most important part is that you'll be acquainted with different tools from the bond side also. So that helps you understand. We have dedicated model trading and I would say trade risk management, PCR. So that will be also in this way. And this particular uh, this particular model offers a lot of opportunity. And uh, if you have any specific demand from your job requirement, you are free to discuss, seek the advice, even if you want to discuss separately 
we will have we will have sufficient support. See, for banks, it is more of a treasury operation side. If you are managing the risk for a bank in terms of their asset liability mismatches, in type of their interest rate risk, that is where this is very critical. So you are essentially moving into the treasury operations of the bank, wherein overall bank risk in terms of interest rate, in terms of market, in terms of operation, these are, these are handled. See, even cybersecurity essentially handles the operational risk in terms of in a banking kind of a model. So your career option is more like trying to manage the overall risk of the bank and trying to reduce the volatility of the returns or the bank uh, profitability over a period of time by hedging. And when you are hedging, that means you are using derivative products. And once you are using derivative products, you are managing different kinds of risk. And that essentially is what you are introduced to in this program. I hope that is clear. Thank you. Yes, next. Yes, um, I've done my BTEC and currently pursuing MTEC. And am I eligible for the program? We require. Uh... Uh, one or two years, two, two years experience also. So if you have a one or two years, you can consider. But if you, uh, so if you have a post BTEC some working experience, then that will be. Uh, Aman has a question. This course is not AICT or UGC certified. What is the credibility of this course? So, so here IIT Kanpur is the Institute of National Importance. If you go on our Wikipedia page or any source, the Institute of National Importance, we are autonomous body. We come under MHRD. And our UG program is also not approved by AICT. So, we don't come under that. So, here. Asim, so, now they, they don't want to join IIT at taking JE and getting a degree because it is not AICT recognized, then it is going to be a problem. <laughs> right. So, so, so here, 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 one aspect is that we can launch our product. The so government does not have any interference with the launch of the program. And we can also, so it is CNET approved and we will be getting the new invocation and it will be also, uh, also pronounced as, as an IDK alumni. I think the next question, Professor Suman had answered this, but we're getting this again from Komal. I am done my CFA. How valuable would this course be? I think we have the same question from Himanshu also. Can a CFA pursue this course? Yeah, so if you're already CFA, so you must be having a sufficient idea about finance, but some aspect like, for example, ML, uh, we also have the blockchain. We also have the different types of advanced diabetes products that may add value to your understanding. But one more good thing is that, as Professor Fani mentioned, that it's going to be a very strong part of the basket of the courses, which are minimum eligible requirement for PhD. Even in future, if you want to go to higher studies, may help you in that direction. And uh, as I mentioned, you, you, you can go through our webpage and see that what curriculum you have done in your CFA and what are you getting different in this particular program. If you feel that at least there is a gain of 50%, it is worth of it. You should go over. Thank you. So I think uh, we will actually be clubbing a few questions that are repetitive because we right, have limited right, time right, in hand. Right. Um, so just quickly walking through the other questions. Um, this is from Naveen. Can you name the quantitative models you teach during this course? So quantitative models, for example, in the first quarter, you will have quantum methods in R and Python. There we start with the evaluate then multi-grade setup. Then we superimpose the time series condition. Then we also deal with the probability based model, which is about the logic probability. There you can calculate the default probabilities of certain forms, the certain finance, the corporate finance issues. Then we deal with the uh, uh, panel data structure. In finance, you should have the understanding about time series panel and cross sections because then you it is easier to do the form level analysis. So even if you are going for certain decision making, great rating, you want to analyze the bonds, you want to analyze the equity market, you want to analyze the commodity derivatives contracts. These uh, models will help you to understand and also to analyze in a deeper way. So some kind of point insights you can add to your understanding. Then in quarter four, we come back again with advanced models. 
There we discussed that how we can apply these tools that you have learned in quarter one to different types of specific finance issues. For example, in uh, future derivatives market, we have price discovery issues. Then we have the volatility spillover spill issues, that how markets are integrated and how we are uh, interdependence. Then it also uh, yeah, explains you that if you have some announcement in the market, then how you can go about it. So you have a whole lot of package. Uh, I, I would say curated for the need of the practitioners and also for the industry specialist. Thank you, sir. We have a question on government jobs. Can we apply for government jobs after completing e-master's degree program? For government job, for example, if you have a bachelor degree requirement, you already have the bachelor. So for government job, we have different types of requirements, right? So there, they also require that if you are satisfying the minimum eligibility criteria, like uh, they require a BTEC four years. You have BTEC four years, but they also require understanding about the subject. Right? You will be appearing for interview, you will be appearing for test. So there, this understanding will help you a lot and it is backed by IIT Kanpur. So it will be an, um, I have different flavor, it will add different flavor to the, uh, I, I would say some committee also, you are going for interview. So it is certainly going to help in a big way. If it is a master degree a requirement that minimum qualification is a master degree, then that may be a challenge because uh, we are considering it as an executive program as of now. Going ahead, there is a highly likelihood that they should be recognized as a degree. But IIT Kanpur offers user degree. Thank you, sir. Uh, Bharat, your question is, uh, what will be the estimated date for selection test? This is going to be May 13th, uh, would be the tentative timelines. Uh, the team will reach out to you and schedule the test or interviews as planned. Uh, this is going to be around May 13th. Uh, curriculum, Aman, our team will just reach out to you and share the detailed curriculum with you as well. Um, on the PhD, I think we've already covered, but uh, how does e-master's program help to direct admission in PhD? Um, the next has been successful. Please share the curriculum. The recording will be shared by every with everyone. Um, so no worries on that. A uh, lot of PhD questions are coming in. I think Professor Suman's been kind enough to actually reply one on one to a lot of these questions. Um, I'll just go to the QA as well. Um, so, IT Kanpur is uh, we, we are trying to add this as a minimum, uh, I would say, minimum requirement for PhD, but it will be announced soon. It, it may take some time, but once it is in the basket, then you are directly eligible for. Getting into uh, we have a question from Dr. Ramesh. I have done certificate program from XLRI in financial analytics with similar content. Can I get admission for PhD at IIT Kanpur for this course? I have already my master's degree from IIT Kanpur and a PhD from IIT Madras. Um, this is from uh, Dr. Ramesh. I can repeat the question if it was too long. All right. This Why is he worried um, about that because he's uh, essentially got a master's and a PhD already. So why is he? How is why he why, why be uh, interested for this? Program? No, no. Even if you want to join a PhD, the, for any PhD program, the masters is masters are the uh, graduation is uh, relevant. We take right. PhD intake directly from uh, four year degree right. Right. as an integrated one, or we take with a master's degree. So. I'm not so sure as to how. Yeah, so Dr. Ramesh, you should uh, take a look at the PG admission cycle of IIT Kanpur and uh, you may be able to get the right information related to PhD admission deadline and uh, apply in the regular PhD admission cycle. You are definitely eligible and uh, uh, there are courses in finance related PhD which you can do. You can definitely explore those choices. Uh, so Ankit has asked about, will we learn anything about options arbitrage methods? Yes, definitely. There are uh, two, at least two modules where option trading strategies and various arbitrage opportunities which are there are definitely covered. So 
it has a strong focus on those topics. Right. Uh, if we've missed out on any questions, actually, if you can just drop in the last few questions, we'll just pick one or two more questions and we can address that. The recording will be shared. Um, so if you've missed out on any question, you can always go back and listen to that again. Yes, one question I think Satish had asked about, uh, I, will it be helpful to pursue a career in you know, a post-graduation in geology and keen to work in mining and industrial sector? So if you wish to explore the finance roles within these segments, then it is fine, but definitely not suitable for the core kind of jobs in mining and industrial sector. Right. It not be the relevant course there. There be question. I'm just looking for the question. So, um, can we get admitted for PhD in IIM or any other college after this course? Uh, I think Professor Vasim and Suman, everybody's answered this, Aman. Um, you obviously the IIMs and other IITs. There are. There is a B.Tech degree. If you have, you can directly get into a PhD or in uh, this program. Okay. Now, what you are essentially asking is whether this master's degree will be treated equivalent to a master's degree for gaining admission into a PhD program in other institutes. That is a call which those institutes need to take. We, because it's a master's and we have said that it is a master's degree, it is those institutes which have to take the call in this. Whereas as far as IIT Kanpur is concerned, we are trying to see if this can be treated as an If you do not have a master's degree and you only have an undergraduate three-year degree, this should be considered as at least a four-year. And if you are an undergraduate four-year degree, this can be considered as a master's equivalent that is something which is under process at IIT Kanpur right now. And we may get a clarity on this in a month or so, but hopefully it should be done. So that is how it is. The degree recognition of a degree is not related to IIT Kanpur. It is related to the concerned uh, institution, which has its own process of recognizing a particular degree or not. But given that this is a master's degree, it should not be an issue. Yeah. Um, thank you, sir. Suraj has a question, and I think he's put that a lot of places. Uh, this question is also oh, has already replied to it. Does SEBI accept this course? Yeah, I think we would like to know more details about what exactly is the requirement. So we okay. encourage Suraj to write to us over emasters at iitk.ac.in. We'll definitely revert thank back you. to the query. Three year degrees and one year PG diploma eligible for the e master's program. Three year degree, I'm not so sure whether this particular program we allow a three year degree. Do we, Zuman? In As of now, it is four year thing, uh, but we are full of making it to three years. Yes. Three years with a, this thing. So that we are trying to get it, I think, to get approved. I think we have, did we move the paper? No, we'll have to, I think, for this program was... Another pending. program, one other program, we already have the three year as a basic... Uh, Economics. Yeah, so we want to move this. So we, hopefully it should be done. So it should not be an issue. Thank you. So I think we've pretty much covered most of the uh, three years graduation program, and this is from Komal. I think um, three years graduation program and CFA charter holder. Uh, as I checked, program preliminary requires four years of graduation. So she just wants to check on her eligibility with three years of graduation and CFA. Okay. So we are in the process of making the eligibility related change, but it has not been done as yet for this program. Uh, 
uh, we urge the applicant to keep exploring the change whenever it is enabled and avail of in any future cohort. Yes. Uh, options on arbitrage methods is from Ankit. Yes, we will be we already mentioned. We have answered that. Yeah. I think we've taken a lot of questions today, and um, thank you so much, everybody, for actually. Uh, making it worthwhile and I really hope we've answered a lot of your questions and thank you so much for esteemed judge, uh, panelists today uh, you know for taking time off and you know helping you plan your career paths because I think this is a very critical decision to make uh, this is you know you're investing the next few years of your life um, so thank you professors once again and thank you participants for your questions we've dropped in our email id as well over here if we haven't addressed or if you still have any more questions Please do drop in your um, questions on this email ID. Uh, Amandi, the last day to apply it has because we see a lot of demand for the program. So it's been extended to May 12th now. Uh, we have a quick poll question. If you could please address this question as well. So we will help connecting back to you depending on what your replies to these questions are. Abhishek, yes, the recording will be available. Great. Uh, thank you so much, sir. I don't want to take any more of your time. If you, if the questions are in um, something that's of en engagement, I can share these with you again. And uh, if you'd like to answer a few of them, we can also answer them. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Raj Gopalan, what was the question? There was some question from Mr. Raj Gopalan about the fee. Uh, now, fee is something which uh, they should definitely write to us to inquire whatever concerns they have. Because, if any, would you like to just uh, respond to Raj Gopalan's? What was the fee thing? Uh, so, basically, uh, think... question, yeah, for working professionals with other family commitments, the quarterly fee is kind of penalizing. Please throw some light. Oh, that anyway, you will. So, 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 so that we take it on a case to case basis. If you have given reason for delaying, then we waive off. No, that actually the quarterly fee, it is normally funded by a through a bank loan most of the time. It's not that it is funded directly from your this thing. It, it comes under the traditional loan component for this thing. The course fee, if you are a there is some this thing of uh, the, if you are a government employee or defense related kind of a thing and if you are a corporate uh, employee if the corporate sponsors at least three or five of you together then there could be some kind of a i think there is some some template which allows us to do so yeah. we need to check that once we receive the request so the request so, will be processed in overseas. So he should write to us. Uh, he's saying he's in overseas. So we may want to take a look at what is the current background and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I hope that's the problem that answers your thing. You should write to us over emasters at iitk.ac.in. Yeah. The fee is yeah, fixed yeah, by so. IIT Kanpur. Normally, we don't have much leeway as program coordinators to play around with it. The fee is an institutional thing. But if if it is possible, we can if we see something, we can push it upwards and see if there is some kind of a leeway which is available. But it's very tough uh, within the system. Okay, on the fee front, at least. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for all your time. And we've taken away some more time now. Uh, we'll reach out to you again and take some more time to address some questions if we haven't been able to address any. Thank you so much, though. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.